Hi everybody! Today we want to have a look at triphthongs. Now what are triphthongs? Triphthongs are three vowel sounds together. And, and this is important, three vowel sounds together in a single syllable. Let's do a little recap on the vowels before we go into detail. We have monophthongs. Those are single vowel sounds. They just have one target. We have diphthongs. These are two vowel sounds put together with smooth movement between each other and they form one new sound. And then we also say they form the nucleus of the syllable. Remember that vowel sounds do not like sharing. Each vowel sound wants to have its own syllable. So a monophthong would form the nucleus of a syllable and a diphthong would also form a nucleus of its own syllable. Now, triphthongs are three vowel sounds together in one syllable. And this is really special and there are not many words in English who have triphthongs. And again, these triphthongs, they are, the three sounds are together in one syllable and again they form the nucleus of this syllable. Now we could also say that therefore triphthongs are a combination of a diphthong and the schwa sound a. Uh. And all of the, the triphthongs really follow this pattern. It's always a diphthong first and then the schwa sound a. Uh. Let's have a look at some examples. For example, the diphthong au plus uh, as in au, au. And you can also see the phonemic transcript for this word. And there is no division there. This is one syllable. The word is not separated into two syllables. Here is another example. We have the diphthong i and our schwa sound a, uh, and together the word is fire, fire. And again, you have the transcript here to help you. Let's have a look at some more examples for triphthongs in English words. First of all, for ow and a. Uh. For example, pow, pow, or sow. Sau. And just to illustrate the meaning quickly, power, when something is strong, this is a noun. Power and sour is an adjective. This is um, the taste of a lemon is sour. And then we also have examples for I plus a. For example, choir. Choir. And island. Island. The first word is a group of people singing together and the second word, of course, is the country next to England. Now again, I have put the phonemic transcript next to those words, next to the spelling, so you can see pa, sa. Again, this is just one syllable here. There is no period mark to show any syllable boundaries. One syllable and ow and a together form a triphthong in both of those words. And then same for choir and island, we have I plus schwa, a. Uh. And again here in choir, there is no dot, no period mark to show a syllable boundary because this word is really just one syllable. And then island, of course, has two syllables, I and then lend, but within the first syllable, you have the, diff, um, the triphthong I plus the schwa uh, together. Now there's something important to remember and I know that there will be a lot of questions probably under this video and some of you will say well wait a second Billy when I say those words they have two syllables. Well yes 
um, in general, triphthongs, first of all, they form single syllables. So this is always the case. Um, we can only really have a triphthong in a single syllable. However, there are some people who pronounce these words over two syllables. Yeah, for example, power, power, or sour. So there's a syllable boundary now, and um, the way I've pronounced it now, really those were two different syllables. So here we would just say, well, there's one syllable with a diphthong, and then there's a second syllable with a schwa. And remember, the schwa is never stressed, so the stress is on the first syllable. And then the same, of course, for choir. You could say choir, and then clearly there are two syllables here. Um, so yes, that is possible, and then there would be no triphthongs, because triphthongs always mean um, diphthong plus schwa and in one syllable. Now, have a look at the words again, and specifically the spelling of these words. Do you notice something about the spelling of these triphthongs? What letters do we use? Now, if you have a careful look, you will realize that in all of these words, we have the letter R. And when triphthongs are formed, the letter R is always present. It's always involved. Also in other examples, you can have a look at the two examples I showed you first. There was also the letter R in the spelling. Now, there are, of course, other words that you think might contain triphthongs. For example, royal, liar, layer, buyer, lower, etc. There are many more. What about those? Do they contain triphthongs? No, because usually the diphthong forms its own syllable here and the schwa forms a second syllable, another syllable. So these do not go in one syllable and so therefore we would say no, those are not triphthongs, those are diphthongs and then there's a schwa, but they do not share the same syllable. They go over two syllables, and so they are not triphthongs. So don't get muddled up here. I know this can be a bit confusing. So whenever we have this um, pattern where we have a diphthong in one syllable, and then the following syllable contains a schwa, we also call this hiatus. And actually, the word hiatus contains an I, a diphthong, and then a schwa. Hiatus. So you can maybe remember it this way. Now this is all that I have to say about triphthongs. I hope it makes it clearer. Make sure to watch my other video on monophthongs and also on diphthongs. I will link to it in this video and also in the description box below. Please like this video, leave a comment, especially if you have some questions or suggestions for future videos.